Hey, welcome friends to Seared and Smoked. I'm Keegan. Today we're going to be checking out the pit barrel cooker. Uh, I've been doing some cooks with it if you've been watching the channel and experimenting with it uh, offline as well. And so I just have some modifications I want to make to it to make it bring it up to a level which I'm more comfortable smoking with on a daily basis. Um, it works great without the modifications for a lot of things and I'm not really knocking it but I would like to add a few, a little functionality from the temperature monitoring standpoint and also temperature control. So we're gonna add a few things that will definitely help that. And then, uh, you know, I'll shoot some videos later after this that, you know, kind of confirm some of the changes we're making today. But um, overall, as far as my opinion on the smoker, the things I've tried, it works great for chicken. I absolutely love it for chicken. If you like chicken, this smoker is for you. Um, it works great for half chickens, uh, chicken wings. I've been working on those as well, kind of perfecting that recipe. And then also I did a prime rib with it. Nice, nice rib roast for Christmas. Um, worked out great for that over the, you know, you put the meat right over the coals. So it works out great um, for, for things that you want to add a little extra flavor to um, as far as kind of a, kind of a, you know, it's a smoking process, but it's got the direct heat as well. So it speeds up the process a little bit compared to like if you have an offset smoker, or like a green egg or something where you don't have the direct heat. So um, it's a little bit of learning curve, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, but I really just want to add a few things to it to just make it a little more usable and also have a kind of a safeguard in mind when you're smoking meat. So I like to know what temperature the meat's at. I, I like to know what temperature the smoker is at. So you can kind of predict the results and how long it's going to be on there. Um, every smoke's a little different depending on the temperature of the, you know, the outdoors. Right now it's cold out, so it could be different in the summer um, and all those different factors. So by adding a few things, I think we can just take this smoker to the next level, something I'll enjoy using more, and maybe you can try these things at home as well. So if you like this video, give us a like down below, subscribe. Love to have you on board. Let's go ahead and take a look at this smoker. All right. Here we have our pit barrel cooker, glossy black, nice sleek finish, pretty attractive smoker to have on your patio here, you know? So overall, the looks are good. It's simple, it's functional. Um, some of the specs here, it's about 32 inches tall, exterior, you're looking just over 20 inches. The inside grade is 18 inches. Um, stand back, we have a vent down here you can adjust. It's got a detached stand that it sits on, so you can actually lift it off the stand. That I did not know when I ordered it. I'd actually prefer if that were attached. And then obviously the lid. The lid is just as you see, nothing underneath to hang it on. You can use You can use that handle to hang it on. It's kind of awkward. So a lot of times I'll just set it to the side. And this is the bottom vent. So it's really simple. Usually during operation, in Iowa we're just above sea level. So you operate somewhere in that spectrum, but you can also open up full bore if you want to take the top off and just get a really hot fire there for, you know, trying to cook burgers or steaks on the actual grill or just crisping something up. So but typically somewhere in that range is going to work out for your like kind of 250, 250 or so temperature. Taking a closer look at the interior, you'll find the two hanging rods that you use to hang the meat on. Those slide out easily. They're just rebar, so you could easily get replacements if needed. And then your standard grill grate. So it doesn't have any, you know, there's no latches or anything. It's just a kind of a standard 18 inch grill grate, which is fine and it sits on three prongs inside of the vessel. And then inside of that, you have your charcoal basket. They recommend using briquettes. Um, one thing here that did not come with the standard package when you order it is this ash pan, which I ordered. It's, uh, I think it was around $30, but I'd highly recommend this part because it just makes getting the ashes out of there a lot easier. Otherwise you have to dig them more, dig them out of there yourself. Um, but this catches most of them, not too much gets left behind. Beyond that, it's just an empty barrel in there. So, okay, so the things I really like about this smoker, the fact that you can hang a ton of meat. So it comes with eight hooks 
And so you can hang, you know, eight racks of ribs, eight half chickens, probably four pork butts if you really wanted to. Um, so you can fit a lot of meat in this smoker. And that's the number one thing I really love about it. Number two, I love the simple design. It's easy to clean up. There's no water pan. All you have to do is just dump the ashes, give it a little shop back once in a while to get things out of there. And that's about it. Um, and then also the fact that it is a simple temperature control design. So you have these, you know, four holes here, which the rebar go through, which is your vent. Um, so that's pretty much the only temperature control, except with the bottom vent, you can open and close um, to get a little more flow in there. But this is really gonna, these four vents are really gonna restrict your airflow. Um, beyond that, your temperature control is essentially the lid. So uh, if you want it to get a little hotter, you can just kind of crack it just gently and then leave that open a little while and let it heat up. The problem with that is it can get out of control too if you leave it leave alone too long. Um, you can also put a little piece of foil underneath the lid and that works too, but it also does rapidly speed up the heating process and the temperature and um, you don't want to leave it alone too long. So um, my main gripes about this, this uh, product is basically there is very little temperature control uh, that's easy. So we're going to add a few things today. Um, and that would be number one, a temperature gauge. So I just ordered a inexpensive temperature gauge off of Amazon and we're going to pop that in the lid. You could easily put it in the side as well. And then I'm going to add a little damper there like you would on a Weber grill. So this is just a part ordered off of Amazon. You'd order it off Weber too, but I'm lazy. So I just usually check Amazon. Um, I'll put part parts down below in the show notes for you, but I like this one cause it has a stay cool plastic handle. So it should be easy to move around, but now, these two things in place, I think it's a pretty complete package. Uh, so with an added uh, probably $20 or so in parts, it's, I think it's a nice setup. And then the uh, only thing you need beyond that is some drill parts, um, which I'll show you what we're gonna use to drill the holes here now. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things we're gonna use to get the job done today. Um, so these are things I did not own prior to doing this job. Uh, I don't use a lot with, work with metal a lot, so uh, these step bits I've heard are really handy for uh, drilling in metal. So we're going to give those a shot. Should punch right through the steel. Comes with a little center punch so you can mark where you're going to drill. And then obviously our parts here. So this again, this is a Weber damper that's usually for the top of the kettle. And then any uh, temperature gauge will do. This was a two pack I found. So I got another one of these if needed, but um, and then just some sort of power drill, get the job done. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get this started. We're gonna go ahead and just drill the center hole for the damper, hole for this guy. And then we're gonna come back and drill the big holes for the damper after that. All right, let's do this. Now we're going to drill out some holes for the vents. Okay, so you can see it's not a perfect job, but the holes are generally fairly centered. And we can just shut it off and turn on a little airflow when we need a little extra temperature, a little boost in heat. And uh, it should allow us to get a little hotter. Uh, one thing I find for chicken wings, it doesn't get hot enough that it kind of renders out the fat. Um, so this way I'm hoping I can boost the temperature to help uh, render out some of the chicken wing fat before you kind of crisp them over higher heat. Um, and then also, you can also close off, you can also use this as your primary vent on top if you closed off 
the rebar holes if you're not hanging meat. So one way to do that is with some magnets, which I'll show you right now. Okay, so if you want to just control temperature of the top vent and you're not hanging meat, you can just take out the rebar and take out all of them and then you can just cover the vent holes with a magnet. So these are just some cheap magnets I got off of Amazon. Um, so you can use these to kind of manipulate even if you wanted to just kind of half open or half close the vent. You could do that as well. Um, you could certainly even do that with holes in the top if you just wanted to, you know, cover the, instead of putting a vent on top, you could just put some magnets over a couple holes that you drill as well. And that would be an easy way to do it too. But I like the control of the vent. You know, it's kind of something you're used to if you've had a Weber and I just find it hand, really handy. So um, these are the two ads I think you might want to do if you want a little more temperature control and then just using magnets as needed as well. So um, there's only one other thing I'm going to talk about that I'm going to probably add as well. Okay, we're going to do one more add-on, which is probably not necessary, but I thought it'd be pretty cool. And that is Weber makes these little grommets. Hopefully that's focusing. If not, we'll take a better shot of it here in a second. But they're made for just sticking like a temperature probe or two inside the smoker without, you know, going through a lid or going through like the rebar opening in this case, you know. But they make this, I think, is generally for one of the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain models. But I thought I'd add it to this. That way, since we're already drilling holes all over the lid, might as well add one more. And that way we can stick a nice temperature probe, such as like if you have like a you know, like a, like a Thermoworks or some other brand. And we can just take this sucker and all you have to do, put it through the grommet and you're good to go. So one fun thing I thought might be good. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Let's get it done. Okay, so I think we got the hole big enough, which was kind of a, a little more of a challenge. And then you can see the backside, all these areas got little kind of burrs on them. So you just want to go back through and file those off. Um, this one's going to be the challenge to get the grommet on because it's a little thicker. So I'll have to do some work on that and then just shoot a little recap video here uh, when I have that completed. So I'll wrap this video up momentarily. We finally got our grommet set in place. That was a little bit more of a chore, but this is going to be handy. Um, just be careful when you're drilling that hole. There's a fine line between too small and too big for that grommet. So that goes in there just fine. I find that if I try to put it through that hole, there's just enough resistance that it wants to pop the grommet out. So that's fine. We'll use that little slot there and that'll work out all right, just fine for me. And uh, other than that, you'll want a couple files. So those burrs on the inside of the hole, you'll want to file off. Um, the task of drilling that grommet hole and cleaning it out took about 30 minutes. So just be aware it's a small project, but it is a project. It's not just one hole and boom, you're done. So the other two, real easy, knock them out quickly. Won't be a problem at all for you to try that. Okay, so that's pretty much a wrap on the pit barrel modifications I have for now. Um, I think you'll find them really useful. Let me know if you have other ideas or if you try these. Send me a comment down below. I answer pretty much every comment that comes my way, so feel free to share anything you have with me. And if you're a pit barrel lover who, you know, thinks I shouldn't have touched it, you can let me know that too. That's fine. You know, if you think it should never have a temperature gauge, hey, let me know. You know what? Let me know your, th your thoughts, your secrets how you use a pit barrel and um, you know if you like this video and, and what we got going on subscribe below we're nearing our first 1,000 subscribers which is awesome thank you for all my supporters out there I think that's just fabulous really happy with uh, you know the interaction that we have going on and look forward to making more videos 
I have a 10 week old son, my first son. So the videos have slowed down a little bit, as you can imagine. It's been a little more to take on than we might have thought. So uh, we're thrilled, but uh, we'll try to post videos when I can. And uh, once again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.